So in this video, we're going to go through the steps you need to take to add JavaScript to your WordPress template. I'll talk you through what WPMP scripts is, WPNQ script, and lastly, WP register script. Okay, if you want to follow along in this video, just make sure you've set yourself up with a template or a theme inside of your own local WordPress site. It doesn't matter what sort of file structure you have. I've got an assets folder, and then inside of that, I've got a JS folder, which contains this main.js. And all that does is it outputs an alert that says this works. So our job for this video is to understand how we can get this main.js added on the front end. Now, this is a bare bones template. This is the template that I built in my video, what is a WordPress theme? So as you can see, we have no styles, nothing added to the page. Now, if we open up our index page, you may be tempted straight away just to scroll to the bottom and somewhere near the closing footer area and then to figure out what sort of helper function you have that can point to your theme URL and then just simply manually link to that main.js. But there's a better way that we can do this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our functions.php file. Now I would say this too, in a, in a real world project, I don't use the functions PHP to write code inside of. Because we're just doing a short video, I am gonna write the code inside of here. But if I were doing this for a client, I typically use my functions.php as the entry point. So I'd set up a different file, I might call it add.js or scripts, and then inside of that, I'd write the code that we're writing now. But for this video, I just wanna keep it as simple as possible. So to begin with, we have to hook into an existing function called WPNQ scripts. So if you're new to WordPress, obviously your first question is, well, how do you do that? How do you execute your function in relation to a WordPress function? And WordPress has us covered there with a function called add action. So all add action does is it allows us to tell WordPress, hey, when you execute this function of yours, I also want you to execute my function or my callback function, if you will. So let's get this written up here. Let's write our function first. Now, typically what I do is I will use some sort of prefix which relates to my theme name. So I've got pixel rocket. So my prefix will be PR, but be aware you're free to use whatever you want, but I would suggest you be consistent here. And then I try and keep my function names as descriptive as possible. So if I return to this code a year down the line, to me, that's fairly obvious what's going on here. I know that's the prefix, add.js, right? So again, you're free to call this what you want, but just try and make it as easy as possible for yourself or for other developers reading this code in the future to quickly figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is our function. So inside of here, we're gonna call further WordPress functions. Now, this is the code we wanna execute in relation to the WPNQ scripts function I mentioned. So how do we do that? Well, add action, like I said, and so there's two things we need to pass in now. First of all, the name of the WordPress function we're looking to target. And of course, that you need to figure out. So you typically do some research on Google, Stack Overflow, something like that. And that's what's gonna lead you to this WPNQ scripts. So let's grab that name over there. Now I'll put links to, the, to this link, to the NQ script and the WP register script as well below in the description for this video. So that's the function we're looking to target. And then now all we need to do is reference the exact name of our function that we want to execute. And that's a string. So we need a comma there to separate the two. And there you go. That now means when, when WordPress executes this WPNP scripts, it's also then going to execute our PR add JS. Now here's my approach for this. You can just directly NQ your script using WPNQ script. However, I like to add an additional step and I'll make it clear during this video why I do that. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna register the script, then I'll enqueue it. And once we've done that, I'll show you why it's helpful to first register by conditionally loading the script on the home page only. Right, so make sure you're inside of this function, right, not, not outside of it. And let's start off by registering our script first of all. And again, with all three of these steps, there are exact function names that you need to reference here, right? Of course, these are not things we can make up. So this is all part of you getting to know WordPress as a front-end theme developer, and there's no shortcut for that. 
Now I know this function already, so we're gonna hook into register script. Now if you're using VS Code, you can install additional plugins, which can help you, as you can see over here. And let's quickly look at the URL, just so we understand what we need to do here. So first of all, we need a handle name. Now this handle name typically should be unique. I'm not sure what would happen if it isn't unique. So it'd be a good idea again to use that same prefix, just like we have with our function, with a PR, use that same prefix as what I would suggest. Second parameter is the SRC. So we need to tell WordPress in relation to the root of our project, where it can find this JavaScript file. And then we've got a couple of optional parameters. Are there any dependencies? Now, this dependency right here, for me, this is the first pro or the first reason why I like to register the script because if you register the script, all WordPress does is it loads it, if you will, in the system. So not on the front end or the back end, just kind of says, okay, you want to register the script, great. But then it does nothing, right? If you then enqueue a different script and inside of the dependencies, you, you list the previous script you've already registered, that pre-registered script will get enqueued as well. So that's the first plus. The second plus is by simply registering it, you can enqueue it conditionally, which allows you to do something like only output it on the homepage. Okay, let's just finish off these parameters. We've then got uh, a version, which, you know, if you're developing a theme uh, for yourself or for, for a client, it's very unlikely you're gonna do anything other than 0.1. And then for me, the, you know, one of the more important options is, do you want this in the footer? So if it's set to false, it's gonna be output in the header. If it's true, it'll be in the footer. Okay, so let's go through this now. So first of all, we need our handle name, right? Which we want it to be unique. So I'm gonna go PR main JS. And then we need in relation to the root of our projects, in other words, the base or the core, call it what you will, we need to point WordPress to our script. And to do that, we can use a function called get template directory URI. So get template directory URI. So that's going to take WordPress to our theme. So just Pixel Rocket. Then we still need to go assets, JS, and then of course main.js. So let's make sure that is on another line for you. So let's add that on. So assets, JS, main.js. And then because we want to get to our footer option and we want to set it to true, all I'm going to do is pass in a blank array. So that's our dependencies. And then for our version, I'll go 0.1. And then I'm going to go true. I want it to be output in the footer for now. We'll switch it to false and we can see both those options. All right, so that's the first step. This will not output the script on the front end at this stage. It won't do anything, but it's registered. So now it's ready for us to enqueue the script. Now the enqueue part, that's what's gonna add it to our front end. And once more, just like with WP register script, right here we have to use the exact function name. So again, it's all part and parcel of you getting to know this. So WP and Q script. Now, because we've already sorted out the SRC and it's pre-registered, all we have to do here is call this handle. And that's it. So for this first step now, this will load our main.js on the front end and we'll see this alert. So let's test that out. There you go. And let's have a look at our page source just so we can understand where this is being output. So we've got PR main. So that ID of the file, PR main dash JS, that's coming from our handle. And then WordPress adds on that dash JS. So as we can see here, this is inside of our footer. If we were to change this to false inside of our functions, then this now gets output inside of the header. And there you go, there's the closing head tag. And that's how you can control whether you output it in the header or the footer. Okay, so the last thing for us to deal with now is well, what if we only want this to be output on the home page? So right now, if I click through, it's loaded on every page. Well, I don't want that. I only want it to be on the home page. So I know inside of WordPress, I've got a is front page function that I can call. So I'm going to go if is front page. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to move this NQ down into CR. Okay. So if we say our changes now, reload the home page, or at least reload our article page, 
Now we don't get the alert because the JavaScript file is only going to be loaded on the home page. If we go to our home page, there you go, still being output. And that's it. That's a brief overview of how you can add custom JavaScript files to your own WordPress template.